We are here in uh, one of the most beautiful places, I think, Coach, scaling off uh, the Mediterranean and Split. Uh, tell us about your city. Well, it's a very old city. It's uh, 1,800 years old. It's very beautiful. It's on a sea with a, with a typical Mediterranean clima. clima. If you can show uh, people there are the, in front of the us, we have a beach and we have a lot of people enjoying. Still, it's very hot. And I think it is going to stay for the next month like this. Did you grow up here? Yes, I'm born here and I, I grew up here. And all my childhood I have been spending here, moving on these beaches, uh, enjoying uh, time with my friends. And uh, I'm, I'm born in a split and I'm living also today in a split with my family. So I'm 100% from split. You have two kids? Yeah, I have two daughters. Luna is 15, Masha is 11. Uh, they are also born in a split, although uh, at that moment uh, I have been working in Belgium. Yeah, your, your basketball career, I think as a coach, you started in split, then you worked in Belgium. Of course, we know you from Donar, where you won yes. four titles, four cups. I have, uh, I, uh, I started in a split and then I moved in, in a Belgium where I was assistant coach earlier and then after after uh, uh, Belgium I came to to Donar and after a Donar last three seasons I have been coach of split uh, before you became a basketball coach sometimes you hear a story where a guy is totally passionate about basketball first he wants to become a professional player if it doesn't work he becomes a coach maybe how was that for you yeah it was the same thing I, I stopped very early because uh, competition was, was very hard so already when I was 16, uh, my coach at that moment told me, hey, you are not enough good to become a pro. So, and I have a place for assistant. Yeah. So he asked me, do I want to be a, his assistant? And uh, I, I said, okay, yes, let's go. So I, I, I started, when I was 16, I started to become uh, assistant coach of, of cadet team. So these oh. were my friends. They played for yes. the team and I was assistant coach. Uh, I was very good in a school. I uh, graduated on economy, okay. yes. and uh, but before I graduated, I already got a, got a, a professional job as a, as a coach of the juniors here in the Split. Okay. So, and then very quick, very quick, bef and then just after I graduated, I got the offer to go abroad to work in Belgium. Okay. And then you know, once when you start working basketball, it's very difficult to change and go back. <laughs> And maybe you wouldn't want to change. No, I didn't uh -huh. want because, you know, this is a real pleasure. And, and uh, for me, this is not a real job. This is, uh -huh. this is my passion. This is my hobby. And I'm not taking this as, as, as a job. Yeah. Um, I recall because our, our paths keep crossing. I met you, of course, in Holland. Then I met you in Zagreb. Uh, where you were just in the stands when Croatia was playing, so to say. Then we met in Cluj when you were the assistant at Eurobasket, then we met in Almere when you were the head coach, we met in Zadar when you were the head coach. How yeah. is your situation right now? Because you stepped down as national team coach. Yes, uh, we, are, we are regular, we see each other at least twice, although I'm not in Holland. So <laughs> uh, I, I stepped down in March, so after after uh, uh, second third, after second windows. Yeah. Uh, at that moment, you know, we, we are Croatia and, and people from uh, our national team are expecting always to be at, uh, on the top. For a certain reasons, we didn't do uh, great first two windows and I was feeling that uh, at that, uh, that moment I'm not enjoying uh, support and that I have responsibility at that moment what the team did in a in a two windows in a four games and i decided uh, together with the with a, with with, a, with my with the people who are responsible in croatian national yeah. federation to step down yes were you still at that moment also a club coach or an, what what is your situation on the yeah. club level yeah, yeah. I, I have been whole season yeah. uh, coaching split yeah. and i finished uh, season as a coach we lost in the semi finals against sedevita to one they were too strong. Uh, be, uh, behind me was a very, very busy year. Uh, 
uh, because we, we, with the split we played two competitions. We played Croatian competition and ABA second with more than 50 games during a season with, uh, with a lot of traveling. And, and, I, and I was uh, head coach of national team, so this was uh, the toughest season in my career till now. We have uh, one of the more famous coaches in the Dutch history. His name is Tom Boot. He had the philosophy that if you can afford it as a coach, you should take a sabbatical year every five, six years, if you can afford it. Uh, what's your view? Because it is so stressful, your profession. I agree. I think that that, that Tom Boot was a great coach, and, and I think that that uh, that a lot of good ideas we can learn from him. But you know, I think I think that for a coach is today it's more difficult than it was in the past, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Why? There are more and more coaches, and there are less and less teams. <laughs> and uh, and I think that competition between co coaches and a pressure is every year really really high. So and and there are new coaches coming. So if you take a rest for a, for a season then you don't know what is going to be next year. There are new coaches on the market and it's very, uh, from, from my point of view, and I think also if you, if you are not Obradovic, then it's very difficult to count that you will get a job again. Yeah, we know Obradovic from the Serbian national team, amongst others, I think. Huh? Yeah, the best and, coach uh, in Europe. And, yes. and of course, that he, he can take a few years rest and, you know, he, for sure he will take a top team. But I think the most of the coaches especially on, on mid-level, uh, we cannot afford that. Yes. Are you also saying that not only are there more coaches available, but maybe clubs are not loyal for, for very long? If a coach maybe struggles for a few months, they consider maybe exchanging him from, for somebody else? I would say both. Mm. I would say that uh, mm. there are, there are uh, uh, I think that uh, we lost uh, a lot of good teams from the past teams uh, who has decent budgets, teams uh, who have making some good results. I think in Holland also some teams disappear. Or better to say, there are a lot of famous teams who has been going through difficult periods. Budgets are going down, you can see. And, and in these situations, I would say that, co that the teams are, are taking uh, very often when we are talking about coaches, some plan B, you know. Uh -huh. They are keeping most of the money for the players. Mm -hmm. Because that's a crucial, of course, and then and then uh -huh. at the end they are, they they see in a, an envelope what do they, what they have, and then they they spend for a coach. So same thing, same uh, that's number one, and number two is also that there are more and more coaches, more coaches than before. So it's very pressure is really you, even in Croatia, yes. like here we have maybe 10 to 20 good coaches who are now without job. You were triggering me. Uh, I, I was in a restaurant not far from here and they had all great photographs of the famous history of Croatian sport, not only basketball, but football, water polo, tennis, etc. And of course, they had the photos from uh, Split, the basketball team that still exists uh, under the name back then of Jugo Plastica when they, I think they won three times the, three times the, the, the row, major yeah. European Cup that was before the EuroLeague. Of course, with guys like Kukoc, Avrankovic, Raja, Pirazovic, we, we all know them. Um, but there were more really famous uh, Yugoslav or former Yugoslav clubs that would reach European finals like Sibona, like Ljubljana, like, Sa like Sadar. Bosna. Uh, Bosna, Sarajevo. Exactly. Where have they gone? Are, are they also the clubs that are now struggling, relatively speaking? Yeah, you, can, you have a situation that, uh, that uh, all these clubs are struggling. Uh, there are some new clubs who are now better and playing, I would say, more important role de than these old famous clubs. Uh, the situation is difficult, economical situation is difficult and you have to know, uh, like 30 years ago, you could leave a country only uh, as a player when you are 28. Mm -hmm. So before you, you are 28, you couldn't leave. Yes. Why? Government didn't uh, let players to go and play abroad. Yeah. And uh, so th that was al allowing the clubs to, to build up a team and, and, and to have uh, long-term plans. Yes. Now in these days, the problem yes. is that over here we cannot keep talented kids uh, when they are 15 or 16, they go abroad. Why? Because there are, uh, there are, there are clubs who are coming with, uh, with better conditions 
and they can offer more than we can offer. So uh, these kids are going very early to play abroad. So that's the reason why it's very difficult for our clubs to, co to compete with top European clubs. I think a, a quite of an extreme example could be Luka Doncic who went to Spain quite early because I think he's still only 19 maybe now. He, uh, he was born in uh, 1999, I think. Yes. So, so he's, yes. he's 19 now. And but he, he's been in Spain for a long time. Yeah, I think that five years he's already there. You know, there are scouts all around Europe, also over here in Croatia. They are following all these kids and uh, it's impossible to keep them. S simply, uh, you, cannot, you cannot keep them in, 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 in over here and develop them. Why? Because they have better conditions. Yeah. Uh, when I'm telling conditions, it's not only financial conditions, but I would say also that they, these, these uh, clubs, they can give them uh, better working conditions like uh, they they can compete uh, they yeah. the competition over there is better yeah. and everything yes at the same time we were discussing before this interview the recent euro baskets for the youth teams where well holland for example were for the first time in the a group in the under 16 where croatia won the title in a fantastic final against spain and we were comparing the basketball education in Croatia for, for young kids versus Holland. Could you explain some of the factors that, that make, despite the competition, like you mentioned, of people, Croatians leaving, leaving the country soon, still being so successful, both with the national team, but also the kids who stay here, the education that they get, what makes them so special? I think that especially in a basketball, uh, I would say that in a, in a you people in Holland will, will understand if I'm if I'm telling that organization of the of the youth uh, in uh, in basketball in Croatia. This is like like you have in soccer organization. So we have a certain academies. Yes. Uh, they have all the kinds of the specialists working with them. Not only uh, coaches. I'm talking about physical preparators. If they need, they have trainers. They have everything they need. Uh, that's number one. And uh, number two is also that uh, that uh, I would say that uh, education in a, in a Holland that the kids if they are if they will finish a school and if they will have a good education then they can have more after they will get a good job uh, and they can and they can really make something in their lives. Uh, we are missing our economy is not strong as it is the economy in Holland. So even if you finish a school here, it's it's I would say that even in that situation you need to go somewhere abroad yes. to find a job. Yes. Why? Because the economy over here it's 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 not so strong, and so for the kids in Holland it's difficult yeah. to take a risk and to say to, to say when you are 15 or 16, hey, let's play uh, basketball. Yeah. You don't go in a school. Why? That's yep. normal. Yep. So, but in Croatia, I would say you can lose less. Yes. Um, of course, we also saw during the summer that Croatia was very successful in the Soccer World Cup by winning the silver medal. Also, looking around here in the city, I, I see a lot of promotion for football. Is, is football on the rise or has it always been that way? And uh, will basketball stay strong as ever? Or is it shifting a bit? No, no, it was never shifting. It was always soccer is number one. And uh, by far, uh, that's normal. You know, this soccer is the most popular sport in Croatia. Uh, but the gap between soccer and basketball is not so huge like in Holland. We were also talking before about some, some talented Dutch players, for example, the group that now won the under-18 gold in the B group, who will now have some uh, promotion to, to the next level. Um, what are you hearing about Dutch talented kids, maybe from other coaches or from, from uh, organizations, from universities, from clubs, how they are developing and what they would need to do to really take the next step? Uh, I spoke with some, uh, with some uh, scouts who has been there and they have been telling me really uh, positive things about uh, that generation. And they are always saying that in a, that in a, in, in a Dutch national team there are, there are kids who are very talented. Uh, but uh, but the problem is, it's easy. I, I will not say that it's easy to find the talent, but it's uh, it's much more difficult to bring him till the end. So and that, that's a, that's a really challenge for whole organization, especially for national federation. Now, when in situation when you have talented team, and I can and we can see that uh, 
in all in all in all uh, categories you have some talent so i think that's very positive mm -hmm. but now of course uh, it, this is something what is now uh, i would say asking uh, clubs and whole basketball organization to invest in them and 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 to and to and to produce and to make of them good players yes well, coach, you know the Dutch league pretty well. You know Donor very well. Did you know, by the way, that they had an election for the Coaches Hall of Fame? And they have had many coaches. They have had Tom Bode as a coach. They have had legendary coaches like Glenn Pinals, Maarten van Gent. Well, Erik Braal was number one, uh, but he's winning everything at the moment. But you were number two. Were you aware of that? Yes, I was aware of that because I have a lot of friends from, uh, from Groningen on Facebook and they have been... They have been announcing that and, and really I have to say that the results, what Donor has in the last past year, uh, few years, this, this is great. I think that, uh, uh, that the coach and whole organization, they really came on the top. When I'm talking, I'm not talking only about uh, Dutch competition, yes. I'm talking about European yes. Cup where they played a very important role. And I know uh, that uh, some teams, Mornar Bar, who played in yes. a uh, in a, in a ABA from competition Montenegro, from yes. Montenegro? It's a big time team, so they beat them. They beat some other teams. Unfortunately, from I did, exactly. Yes. So so really, what they did in the last few years, this is amazing, and I think that this is the best thing what happened in a, a, for a basketball in a, in a Holland. Um. Of course, it's speculation, but their ambition is to try to reach the Champions League this time, which they almost made huh? last time they yes. were just beaten by Estudiantes. Any vision, any advice on what they could do more to take an extra step in the European Cups? I cannot give them advice. Why? Because I was so busy during the season. I told you that I was really focused only on my job. I didn't see a lot of uh, from them. Uh, in a Dutch competition, I didn't see a single game. I, I saw some highlights from European games, but it's not, I don't know, I, actually, in, in fact, they have a new team. They, they cha as I saw, they, they changed few players. I know some guys from my time who, who have been there now. We are talking about very serious players, and I think that the strength of donor is a, is a great chemistry and i would say that uh, mature players like uh, arvin like jason uh, they are they are they are keeping all the people uh, around them and they are really focused i know how they are how good how big professionals are they so really i wish them all the best and i wish them to qualify um like you mentioned before, you got congratulations on Facebook because of the coaches' election. Uh, can you explain what, what you were very successful in Groningen? You won a national title, but you will also won three other cups. Uh, but maybe anything else in your, your way of working or your personality that makes you so loved in Groningen? I don't know why I'm so loved. I think I, I was, uh, first of all, I, I really enjoyed my three years in Groningen, or two years and a half. I think that uh, Groningen is a very beautiful city. I think that the uh, club was very well organized also at that time. Uh, everything I needed, I, I have it. I had it. Uh, players were very uh, enthusiastic. They have been really hard working, professional, and, and especially I enjoyed, I would say, supporters because I think that we have been averaging like 3,000 people yeah. a game. And that's amazing. Like there are not so many competitions in Europe, and not so many clubs, which can say that they have every game like 3,000 people. And I, I was giving my emotion. Yeah. And I think that I think I think also that from the supporters uh, we got emotion back. So I was yes. really I I really really enjoyed, and this is and this is really like uh, one episode, uh, great episode in my life. As I recall it, indeed, that was one of the first things that, that was mentioned a lot. Okay, this is a guy from the, from the Mediterranean. He's got that passion. He's got the basketball knowledge. And then somehow I think you found a very good balance between maybe in Holland people expect you to be more business-like or be uh, more rational or be more calm, but to share your passion with the team, with the fans, and also produce results. And that feels like a very good balance. I, I, I was I was 
I, I always when I'm coaching when I'm coaching team I am I'm coaching team on my way I'm not thinking what other people expect from me I think that would be a wrong so I was coaching a team and I was I was it's me yep. I'm always trying to be with a scaling on the lines and uh, sometimes I know and I will do everything what I need to do to my my team to win uh, of course I am Mediterranean and my approach and my uh, is different than in Holland we are not the same, but I was I was always trying not to, to cross a certain line, not to become unpolite or not to, to, to insult somebody. I was always professional, I was always trying to be constructive and to talk about basketball, not to talk about some other things which are not important. Let's talk uh, about another great professional from Croatia that we know a bit. Uh, I know you are friends with the coach uh, Laki Lagner. Uh, yes. He won a bronze medal. Uh, with the under 20 women, I'm saying uh, the top of my head. Did you talk to him recently? Yes, I spoke with him a few days ago. Uh, I, I had a contact with him right after the game. I congratulate to him. Uh, I like Lucky a lot. I know him already for, uh, for a long time. I know uh, his passion for basketball. I know that he is a hard worker. And unfortunately for him, uh, he was always busy, I would not say with the small clubs, but as clubs who are playing in some lower divisions. Mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, that uh, once, if he will get a chance to, to, to coach top division team, that he will be very successful. Yes, I, I, I would have no doubt. I hear nothing but, but good uh, stories about him. I think he will uh, be coaching Landslake again uh, yes. this year. What type of person is he? He's a, he's a guy who admires basketball. He's a guy who's following basketball. He's crazy for the basketball. He's watching all the kind of the games, Euroleague games, and he's investing a lot in his knowledge. And, 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 and he's a guy uh, who's very open, I would say uh, very warm, has a, has a very friendly relation with the players. And I, I, liked, I like to speak with him. I like to speak with him. Time to time I call him and then we are discussing about basketball, we are discussing about game. And it's always... Uh, it's always a pleasure to speak with him because I can, I can overhear the good things. Yeah. Um, about another Croatian coach who worked, uh, well, was very successful in Germany, then moved to uh, Holland last year, Silvano Poropat. He announced that he's going to step down from Den boss. Um, can you understand his decision? Of course, I mean, I have nothing to understand. Each of us has his own reasons, and uh, I have, I have, I haven't, ri I don't have a right to discuss mm -hmm. about his reasons, as no one else has a right to discuss about my reasons. We, we are running our lives. We are mature, and we have a right to 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 make decisions which we think they are best for us. Yes. I think how it was announced that he gave it a very good thought and decided, okay, this is not the place for me to be right now. I better announce it early and let somebody else step in. I think that's a very uh, mature decision. I mean, as I, as I told, I have, I have nothing to comment about that. I'm, I was also making my decisions and, and I'm not, I mean, uh, for me, when I make my decision, it's my decision. And exactly. I, I don't think that somebody else needs to, to yep. comment it or have us. Every, everybody ha can have opinion. Let's uh, make a little switch to uh, well, the Dutch national team. You played against them, of course, in Almere. Then you played them in Zadar. Now they're on to the next round. Croatia 2, Italy, Lithuania, Poland and Hungary. Yes. It looks like from the standings that Italy is a bit ahead and Lithuania too. Okay. And then I think there's one more spot for the World Championship qualifier. Yeah. Any analysis on this group? The strength of Hungary, for example, Poland? I think that... Uh, that, uh, that uh, very important uh, will be uh, Windows number five and Windows num uh, number six. Or let's say now, if, it, if we are talking now, we have two windows. Now we have one window, window which is going to be in November, and yep. window which is going to be in February. This is going to be crucial for Croatian national team because in, in, uh, in, on these windows we cannot count on our NBA players. Mm -hmm. So only players who are playing in Europe. Uh, can participate yep. like it was before and uh, and uh, for all other teams I think that uh, that uh, uh, these with these windows there are certain difficulties why because you are depending a lot about uh, are you lucky or not in a sense that there are a lot of it's a season 
There are a lot of players who are injured, and uh, if you have few uh, players who are injured yes. uh, or not in a good shape, then it's very difficult yes. to make a good result. So this is and and this is something you cannot influence. Would you maybe say that the window system, where the idea was to have more, to have games more often, is not really working yet? I don't think. I think that even that even FIBA said that uh, that the next co uh, qualification round is not going to be uh, on this way. So I think that even they uh, they con confess that. Uh, that this formula was not the best one. Yes. Could you maybe even say, because that's an idea in Holland, that um, because we have a lot of players who are playing in Europe and it was kind of easy to get the team together and to have a, a constant uh, team, the, the same guys in every window was to the benefit of, of Holland? Probably, but I would say that the big benefit of the Holland is that they have a team, that the Holland has a team who is playing already for uh, several years together. I think that in, a, in 2015, practically the same team was playing in Zagreb. Yep. I think there are, there, is no, there are not so many new guys there. So I think that the that, that, uh, benefit of Holland is that this group of the players are playing already for a few years together. Yep. They know each other. Yep. Uh, they are very good players. And I think, and I think that, uh, that now, of course, uh, uh, little bit older they are becoming, then new some new faces would be obliged to step in. So yes. at that moment, when you have when you have a certain generation which is going which is going another generation which is supposed to come, then you can expect to have some tr problems. But now I think that the group will stay together still, and I think that Holland has a very serious team. And I know uh, we played twice against them. I know all these players, and uh, they they are very good team. They are very uh, co coach is a very serious guy. Th of course, they have the same coach. That's also yeah. a big plus for them. They know system. Uh, they know each other, and uh, they are. I mean, uh, coach is running them very well. I, I I like them. We I I will be going to Lithuania myself. First, we will play at home against Hungary. That feels like a must-win game. Well, not officially, of course, but that will be a, a great test in Almere. Then we'll go to Lithuania. That will be a challenge, but I think it will be a great experience. And then we'll see indeed uh, how window number four uh, where where everybody is. I think he, he, that um, first of all, especially playing home, uh, you have to you have chance to, against anybody. I think on the road uh, you are depending, especially the uh, Lithuania. Lithuania is a strong team, but of course, Lithuania is also depending uh, which players they are going to play. I I saw I I think that I read that Valenciunas is not going to play, mm -hmm. so it is going to be a big minus for them. Yep. But uh, we, I think that the things will be will be more clear in in two weeks when yep. uh, when uh, when the when the windows will start. I think that. Uh, the the more very important I will repeat is that who is going to play, who's going to be on the other side. Also, I don't know in Hungary what's with Adam Hanga is he going to play yes. or not. So he was the big star of them. I'm not sure if he's still with Barcelona, yes. but was yes. he was one yeah. of the. So th yeah. that that's that's a, that's a big question. If if he is not playing, then Hungary is not so uh, strong as they are strong with him. Yes. How would you describe the way Holland played the, the games that you had with them? What what is their, what are their strengths I think or weaknesses in, in their game? I would say uh, first of all, in offense they are very experienced. Mm -hmm. They are not they are not uh, rushing. They are not panicking. Uh, they are they have a lot of patience. They move a ball well and they are taking open shots. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very tall. It's not easy to play against them because uh, when you have uh, Hank Norell inside. Uh, he is very tall. He is he is uh, he is good in a c covering a space inside. It's not easy to penetrate. It's not easy to finish. So uh, Holland has a size uh, as any serious team. So they yep. have tall centers. They have athletic guards. Yep. I think uh, with now Humming, Humming is a guy who's coming. So he can yeah. be f first year in Europe. He was doing a good job. I think that 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 he can be a player who can give some extra quality in the future. Yes. 
Yeah, like you mentioned before, there are some new players coming in, always in the national team, and if you have a good mix with the veterans, it, it seems like that's uh, that's what. All and they have, has. I think that they have, they are, they are, as a persons, they are very good persons, and they have very good chemistry. That's something I think I can you can see from from outside that they are they are very quiet as a group. Uh, you have no one, uh, you know, who's who's I would say. Uh, no, no one who's trying to prove that he is bigger than than the rest. So really, they are team. I'm not sure if you have time to see stuff like that, but there was a beautiful NBA documentary about the draft with Luka Doncic, but yeah. also with Musa. Musa, I think yes. you played against Musa. Yes, uh, we played. He knocked you out of the playoffs. Uh, yes, am I right? Uh, so you played against him. How, how would you describe him? Don, Doncic, we we kind of know, but Musa was also drafted. He was drafted Musa, by Brooklyn. Uh, yes. Uh, we played against Musa last two, three seasons because he was a member of uh, Sedevita. Uh, he's a very talented player, very mobile, yeah. uh, very skilled, uh, can put the ball down, can penetrate, can shoot the ball, uh, has a nice vision. Uh, physically, I, don't, I think that he has to improve, of course, to play NBA because he's still 19. Uh, but uh, if we are talking about skills, he's very skilled, and I like I like his mentality. Uh, he's not scared of no one. No, he wants to win, and I heard that he's very hard worker. Uh, it's always risky to make comparisons, but maybe his body type and his, his skill level. You, you would think Porzingis like. You know, it's also he's, he's not so tall. Oranges, he's, he's not so tall like no. Porzingis. No. Porzingis is much Seven taller than he is. Yeah. Than he is, and and you know when you are when you are tall as a Porzingis, and when you have uh, such a quickness as Porzingis, Porzingis has, then it's easier for you. Uh, but uh, Musa is a guard. is a typical guard. It's a, let's say two-three position, and uh, for him now it's, it will be interesting to see. Uh, which kind of the playing time he will get over there. Um, let's take one little step back to that Croatia under-16 men's team that won the, the gold in the Novi Sad. Um, they have some sons of famous players. The son of Pedrasovic is playing, uh, amongst others. Uh, also the son of Pekacin. Uh, but also they have a big guard who, and again, it's always risky to make comparisons, reminded me a bit of Kukoc at Tisma. Yes. Can you describe that team? Maybe you know some of the guys. I think that that that's a team, except three of them, you said there are also some other kids who are very talented. I think that they have potential. Uh, they are very, very talented. Um, they proved that. Not only on competition, but also during the season they, when they played for their teams. Mm -hmm. We know already for them uh, for, for a long period. Tisma is, Tisma is playing for Real Madrid. So uh, I think that they are very talented. But now the question is, first of all, that they have to continue working hard. That's number one. And uh, number two is uh, that they, in the teams they will be, they need to get a chance. If they will not have a playing time, then it's impossible. It looks like a fantastic uh, generation. I really enjoyed watching them. Um, yes, one of the things in the NBA documentary when, of course, they also went back to the times of Petrovic and all the greats uh, that also made it in America is that it was claimed that uh, local basketball education also has a lot of military discipline, as it was called. Where I know the Croatian players usually as also as very creative but maybe it's both. Maybe they are taught discipline at a young level, but also there's room for creativity. Is, th is that still the case today, or is that more yes, the education system of, no, it's of back then? No, it's the case also a bit today, but today is very difficult to have military uh, organization because kids are not like they have been 20 years ago. I think that, uh, that the kids changed, and today, uh, if you are asking too much discipline, then it's impossible. Yeah. So I think that uh, this military approach was uh, was uh, was something what we had 20 years ago. In these days, it's a more it's a more uh, approach that we are trying to con to con uh, to show them how to play and 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 learn them. But of course, over here you have to know that there is a big competition between kids who will be a player 
so that's making uh, uh, life easier to the coaches because if yeah, if yeah. you don't want to respect the rules then there is other guy who will yes. respect and who will play instead of you Pasalic, he's returning to uh, to Donar, right? You have a, a good connection with him, with Drago. Yes, uh, I was his coach when he was uh, 15. So from 15 to 18, I have been coaching him. So I know him a long time ago. I think that uh, today, of course, that's not, a, that's not a kid of 15 or 18. Now he's a mature person. It's a good player. He had a very good career. He played abroad for uh, big teams. Uh, now he is in uh, Holland. As I heard, he is very happy. He is playing well, and of course, I wish him to continue like this. Yeah, I think he's a very, like you mentioned, one of the veterans mixed in with guys like Humming, but Slachter you mentioned, Cunningham, Duracell, Kunis. Yeah, that's well. Stoner has an excellent mix again. Exactly. They have, as I as I told earlier, they have a very mature team who is mixed with uh, with uh, with uh, some young good players and uh, I know I uh, simply when you have when you have uh, players like Drago like uh, like Sh like uh, Jason like mm -hmm. Arvin and like Sean then uh, it's easier for a coach because then you don't need uh, to think are they going to practice uh, do they have responsibility are they uh, living li like professionals because they are doing that yes and I think to, to round it off, it seems that they also are not satisfied, even though they've won so much, they have a challenge because they want to do well in Europe. Maybe they'll get some more competition because Leiden is quite strong again, Den Bos is coming, Dordrecht has a new team, so the league is kind of interesting. So yeah. despite all their success, Donor will stay hungry. Uh, I think they I think they are very professional and very hungry. And uh, and it's good for a, for a Dutch competition that uh, again, they have uh, 10 teams. Mm -hmm. So one team more, it's not easy to have another to have one team more because you know for years you are looking for a new team and you cannot find it. So to have a ten, ten, ten teams, it's a, it's a great thing for a Dutch competition. To round it off, coach, maybe anything you want to say to to the people in Holland, the supporters of the Orange Lions or against the Orange Lions or the supporters of Donor, any any words to to finish up here from the beautiful seaside in Split. Uh, to all the people in Holland who who likes basketball, uh, to supporters of the basketball, to people who are supporting national team, especially, of course, to supporters of the donor, I wish them all the best, wish them successful season and hope to see them again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coach Kalin from Split, your beautiful hometown, and we hope to see you somewhere in Europe soon. Thank you.